PCT is honoring James Parsons, who passed away earlier this year. James initially came to PCT as a volunteer through Footprints of Pacifica. He was passionate about training new members, and he worked on hundreds of studio productions throughout the years. We are proud to recognize his legacy of dedication to PCT and the COSIDE. Since 2002, local realtor Christine Stahl has served on the board of directors of Pacificans Care, a nonprofit that supports community based social services. PCT honors Stahl for her many years of service to Pacifica and its people. PCT is honoring Robbie Bancroft, who is the host of a podcast called Robbie's World, co founder of Breakers Restaurant, and singer of a band called Obsolete Man, for contributing to Pacifica by helping those in need and making our community a happier place for everybody. Since 1962, Michael and Lewis Jacopi have helped countless local businesses and farmers markets. PCT would like to honor Jacopi Farms for their exemplary service to the community through their produce. PCT has recognized Jill Reed, who passed away this past February. She dedicated her work to communities throughout San Francisco and Oakland she worked as a director for the Salvation Army Harbor Light Center, helping people find solutions to drug and alcohol addiction. PCT is honored to recognize all she has done. Joanne Zavaral was a longtime supporter of local organizations, a friend of PCT, and a dedicated volunteer at the Second Harvest Food Bank. Her gentle spirit touched so many lives, and PCT honors her for the positive impact she made on the community. The Oropesa family have been a staple of Half Moon Bay ever since opening Half Moon Bay Joe's in 2002. From sponsoring a Little League team to hosting food drives, they have always made sure that the entire community feels like just another part of the family. PCT is honoring Scott Morrow for guiding our community's COVID-19 response as San Mateo County's health officer. For his services to keeping the Bay Area safe and healthy, we thank Morrow for his dedication and hard work. Susan Getra Wallace has a long career in promoting the prosperity of the coast side and has an admirable history of volunteer work that continues today. PCT is proud to honor Susan for her continued work toward advancing the wellness of our community and its members. PCT is honoring Jackie Spear, a Bay Area native. She is a successful politician who is currently serving as a U.S. representative for California's 14th Congressional District. Jackie is a member of the Democratic Party and has been serving since 2008. Council member Joaquin Jimenez was elected last November to the Half Moon Bay City Council, the first Latino ever elected. A teacher, a volunteer, and an avid supporter of nonprofits, we are honoring him for all the good he's done and continues to do in the Coastside community. Well, good evening, everyone, and, and welcome to PCT Honors 2021. My name is Martin Anaya. I'm the executive director here at Pacific Coast Television. And um, I just want to take a moment uh, as we as we look forward to this evening and all the wonderful people that we're going to meet uh, to remember that as we're recording this, we'll see this many times in the future on many replays, but as we're recording, this is actually 9-11. This is actually the day, the 20th year anniversary of 9-11. And of course, we're remembering all the fallen heroes, all of the fallen uh, first responders, and of course, the victims of 9-11, and remembering what they did to build communities and their communities in New York and at the Pentagon and uh, around the world, all the people and all the families have been touched. So as we think tonight, as we think back on that 20 year anniversary, and we look forward to PCT honors. I also wanna remember those, those people that were, that were taken from us and all the people that were taken from us this last year, let's face it. There are heroes in every walk of life and there are everyday heroes. And some of those heroes are gonna be with us tonight. And again, sadly, some of those heroes were taken from us over the course of this past year due to COVID and other factors. So as we celebrate tonight, we also want to remember and we also want to keep in mind all the people who've done all the wonderful things, both, both the things both in our community and communities 
uh, throughout, beyond, beyond, way beyond the coastline. Um, but with that, I'd also like to bring in our uh, vice president here at Pacific Coast Television, Stephanie Hare. Hi, Stephanie, are you out Hi, there? Hi, yeah, I'm here. I'm so How excited for this. I'm doing really wonderful, and I just feel so excited and uh, so fortunate to be here with everybody tonight. And so I'm just, this is just a wonderful day for the whole thing to happen. So proud of you. And, and I couldn't agree with you more. Stephanie, I mean, you know, you've been on the board at PCT uh, representing Half Moon Bay and the South Coast. I know it was your idea to to bring in the Oropesas and a and, uh, couple of the honorees this evening. Is there anything that you would like to, to, to mention to set the evening on, off tonight for us to think about as we go through our, our wonderful list, our wonderful lineup of honorees? Well, I just want to um, say that it's just such a wonderful day that First of all, with 9-11 and, uh, you know, memorializing all the people 20 years ago, then we will never forget that. And uh, I think it's a very nice time to celebrate our honorees because we actually lost a couple of them. And so uh, I think it's just really appropriate and just really wonderful that it all fell on this day. And I'm so grateful to be a part of it. Well, thank you so much. And Stephanie, I, I couldn't have said it better. You're absolutely right. We are going to give thanks and praises to all the wonderful people in our community and beyond who have made the coastside what a wonderful place that it is to live. So stay tuned, folks. We've got an action-packed show for you. Uh, but before we get into that, real quick, I want to give you a little bit of the history of Pacific Coast TV. We are, as it happens, celebrating next year a 45th anniversary as a nonprofit organization. That's right. Yes. Next year will be our 45th year as a nonprofit. We've been serving longer than that. We're the nation's oldest community media center. And uh, let me be quiet and let's uh, let's let this clip do the talking. We'll see you in just a moment with some outstanding, outstanding volunteers and some outstanding honorees. Stay right there. It may be hard to believe, but Pacific Coast Television has been serving the coast side since 1968. In Pacifica, it turned out, there was in fact a TV class at Oceana High School. And what wound up happening from there was this gal that was working with them said, hey, let's get our own little studio here in Pacifica. Studio 70 then became really the first local cable station here in town, becoming one of the first, if not the first, cable station in the country. So Rick Miller is going to get a chance to kick Karen Ola into a good shot here. Now if he gets a good punt off, he can give the pressure on Oceana. Broadcasting with heavy, old, black and white cameras, PCT covered the Pacifica oil spill and won an Emmy in 1972. Amazingly, the oldest person on the crew was only 15. There was a giddy freedom about the place. So anything that we thought was interesting and fun and colorful or new, we just covered it. By the 1990s, PCT had become a destination site for interns and broadcast students from across the Bay Area and saw its schedule filled with imaginative, award-winning shows and local government coverage. Very proud of, of our Channel 26. The people at Channel 26 uh, invited me down to work on the auction and I had a blast and hopefully uh, we raised a little bit of money for Channel 26. PCT is a team effort, working with the cameras and working with the equipment. Every time I come, I never know what I'm going to work on, but I always enjoy myself. This is a lot of fun. It's a learning environment. It's a laboratory where you get to test new ideas, uh, see what works, and see what doesn't work. And when you work in other people's productions, you get an idea of what will work on your production. In 2011, PCT expanded its reach down the coast side to bring programming to Half Moon Bay, Moss Beach, and a dozen other cities as far south as Pescadero. PCT provides coverage of the coast side's many political meetings and major events such as the Pumpkin Festival, and programs two cable channels, one on either side of Devil's Slide. PCT recently completed an expansion program into HD streaming online and it has built a vast archive of on-demand programming, available on any screen 
on any device at any time. Pacific Coast Television is the gold standard in community media programming. And uh, we're back. Uh, once again, if you're just joining us, my name is Marty Anaya, and this is PCT Honors, the show that really, really recognizes and honors those people that make our Pacific Coast here in San Mateo County such a fabulous place to live. And I hope that you got from that last clip there a little bit of the flavor of what PCT is all about. One of the people and the first person that we'd like to recognize tonight um, that makes this place a wonderful place to live and has as a gentleman by the name of James Parsons. And James Parsons first came to us as a volunteer. Uh, he was working on the show Footprints of Pacifica. And um, unfortunately, we lost James this past year. And uh, I'm, I'm sad to say that uh, uh, he, will, he will be forever remembered and missed. But I would like to play the little video of James that kind of acknowledges him and, um, and gives you a little bit of of information about who he was as a person. Can we roll that, Jason? James initially came to PCT as a volunteer through Footprints of Pacifica. He was passionate about training new members, and he worked on hundreds of studio productions throughout the years. We are proud to recognize his legacy of dedication to PCT and the COSIDE. And here to accept um, the honor on behalf of James Parsons is uh, his daughter, Patricia Carrazzo. Hi, my name is Patricia Carrazzo. I'm the stepdaughter of James Parsons. I am happy to accept this honor of recognition on his behalf from Pacifica Coast TV. James loved his community and was so happy that he had found a place where he could continue to learn and share. He especially enjoyed working with the interns and helping them. He was passionate about giving back to the community, but he also felt that he got so much back in return. Thank you again for this recognition. Thank you, Patricia. You know, we love James, and um, he's been a part of our heart here at PCT for a very long time. Uh, no video or, or, or award could really do justice to the, to the love and the compassion and the care that he showed every day coming to work here at PCT. Um, in addition, this last year, uh, we lost a dear friend of ours to COVID. Uh, her name is Jill Reed, and Jill was on our board of directors and uh, was one of my closest friends in the world. And I gotta tell you, anybody that, if there's any person in this world that believes that COVID is not real and it can't kill healthy uh, people, uh, then they need to talk to me because I can tell you about my friend, Jill. But um, without further ado, what I'd like to do is, is really recognize our dear, dear friend and compatriot, uh, Jill Reed, and for all that she's done and all that she's done for PCT and all that she's done for so many people as the type of individual uh, in, her, in her practice, she worked at the Salvation Army and in her life, she ministered to the needs of many, many, many people in many, many ways, not just here at PCT, but throughout uh, the course of her life. She's a licensed marriage and family, a family therapist, and has done many, many things for many, many people over the course of her life in her church and her family work. And here to accept uh, the honor for Jill on her behalf is her daughter, uh, Kim Reed. Uh, I should say Kim Sharper. Hi, Kim, how are you? <laughs> And we can read. Hi, Marty. It's really <laughs> nice to be here today. Thank you so much for honoring my mom. Oh, it's um, great to have you here. Damage, yeah. Can you do this? San Mateo County native, you know, she's from East Palo Alto. Yeah, she's, she's from East Palo Alto. That's right. Yeah, she's definitely very excited to be on the board. Um, you know, definitely excited to do anything that you asked her to do because, you know, anything for Marty Mar. Um, <laughs> my mom is definitely a community leader. She definitely was a community activist and my whole life she worked in helping people and you're absolutely correct COVID can take the healthiest of people you know i assume that my mom would outlive me uh, um, we, no, so. none of us ever thought kim that this horrible insidious disease would yeah. take somebody so near and dear to us and um and and so healthy and vibrant so healthy and vibrant and ate well and took care of herself did her peloton five days a week 
So, you know, it's, it can happen to anybody. So just take care of yourself, please, everyone. And wear your mask and give that Yes, wear your mask for sure. Could you just real quickly, just tell us a little bit about who your mom was? My mother uh, was a licensed marriage family therapist, um, worked for the Salvation Army as the executive um, director, the program director, I'm sorry, for the Harbor Life Program, which was their drug treatment program on Harrison Street. She also was a therapist, so she saw clients after that. She also worked in group homes as a therapist for the kids. My mom owned and operated group homes for 20 years, most of my life, and also foster homes um, before she decided to go back to school and get uh, her BA and then her master's in psychology. Yeah, she got her master's fairly, superhero. like in her 50s, right? She came back. She was 61. Well, yeah, she was 61 when she passed, but yeah, she. my mom got her, graduated from college at 40. She got her BA, I'm sorry, she graduated from college at 44. She got her master's at 50. She became a licensed therapist at 56. Wow. Um, and she worked three jobs when she passed. My mom was a superhero, to say the least. And such a friend to so many people would give you the shirt off of her back. Absolutely, and I miss her every day. Me too, me too, Kim. Yeah, Kim I know you do, Marty. Thank you, sweetheart, for coming no on and, and being a part of this tonight. Uh, we've got a long way to go, so please, if you can, stay tuned and check it out because we've got a lot of wonderful people that we want to recognize this evening. But thank you so very much for coming on and saying a few words about your wonderful No mom. problem, Marty Mar. I love you. Love you too. All right, folks, um, right now we're going to go out to a very, very short break, and we'll re be right back with our next honoree. Stay right there. Pacific Coast Television provides a platform for community members to put their shows on TV. Let's take a look at some of the shows produced and aired on PCT throughout the years. Welcome to the only live primetime musical variety show on the West Coast of the United States. Rock some gravel, make a solid room. I got some real good TV tonight. You ready? This is Soundwaves TV. Let's welcome Kathy Holly and Spotlight. Welcome to Straight Talk for Entrepreneurs, where we reveal what it really takes to build a successful business. Hi, I'm Brandon C. White, and this is Build a Business Success Secrets. I had to do a special, I think I'm going to call this a season finale with my pal of pals, Mary Beer is in the house. How are you, Mary? Hi, if you have an idea for a show and want to get your message out to the world, PCT can make it happen. For more information, please visit PacificCoast.tv and sign up to become a member. Let's make your show a reality. One open mic. Well, as you can see there, for, for many years now, PCT has been bringing the coast side together. Uh, one of the things that, we, one of the ways that we bring coast side together is of course this honors program, but there are many, many programs that are created from coast siders just like you. And you can create your own program. If you uh, look us up, it's pacificcoast.tv, uh, or you can call us at 355-8000 in the 650 area code to start your own program. And again, be part of this this method, this, this way that we train, educate, and support the growth and maturation of the voices in our own community. Now, I wanna let you know that right now, PCT is under a little bit of a threat uh, because basically uh, this complex that we're in, the Crespi Business Center has been purchased, okay? So, and, and I'm sure some, many of you have been hearing about this. Bottom line is what's happening is, is that the new landlord, is, that we're trying to come to terms with being able to purchase this unit. Now, as many of you know, there's not a lot of places that something as technologically advanced as what we do, all the vocational education, the job, training, education, and all the things that we do, it's a very sensitive thing. There's a lot of sensitive connections and interconnections to both cable, the internet, and so forth. So moving would be a hassle. So what we're trying to do right now uh, is really not have to move. We're trying to find the money to buy this unit. And we think it's going to possibly take as much as $500,000 or more. We're trying to help find and locate that money. And uh, here to tell you a little bit more about this, I have a spot on the other side. We'll come back and talk to more of these wonderful honorees. So stay right there.
your friends from Creature Features. Be sure to catch us every Saturday night at 10 p.m. right here on Pacific Coast TV. We show spooky movies, have interesting guests, and sometimes Livingston will build us a delicious souffle. Don't miss it and see you soon. Pacific Coast TV has been connecting the San Mateo Coast side through public, education, and government access television since 1977. As your local media center, we have provided a home for local personalities, performers, and artists to share their craft through one-of-a-kind programming. There you go, now shake that thing. Many ongoing television series have called PCT home throughout the years. But you know what I mean. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone, thank you, thank you very much. What is she? Is she here? Consistent coverage of local events and government meetings continue to bring the community closer together. PCT needs you now more than ever. The business complex housing PCT has been sold. Our individual unit is being offered for sale. We urgently need your donations to help keep PCT in its home. Please donate today by calling 650-355-8000 and leaving a message. Or visit our website at www.pacificcoast.tv to donate online now. We truly appreciate your help. Now, back to the show. Pacific Coast Television and PCT Honors. We're trying to make the coast side uh, a more uh, an inviting place for people to come. Part of the things that we like to do is really educate both people, not only locally, but from literally around the world about uh, what this coast side is like. And to help us do that, uh, we need your help, especially now uh, that we are um, facing a, a huge mountain to, to purchase this space that we're in. Uh, but um, our next honoree is a lady who's been really supporting the coast side for a long time. Her name is Christine Stahl. And unfortunately, I don't think we have her on the call, but you know who we do have on the call? We have her friend, Brian. Oh, Brian, Brian, uh, let's see, there he is. Brian Kaysen, hello, sir, how are you? I'm doing well, glad how to be here. Know, how do you know Christine Stahl? Tell me about that, that relationship. Oh uh, yeah, I, well, our relationship, and I should say our, my wife and I, our relationship goes back many years, uh, almost two decades now. And wow. in, fact, in fact, I am proud to say that at one point in my life, both my wife, Christine, and I, the three of us, lived together. So we can get into the three three's company segment if you want. <laughs> Were you Jack Tripper? Uh, I, I was the Jack Tripper, but I was married, so I didn't have <laughs> two uh, two ladies in the house. But uh, Christine was a pleasure to live with, and, and she's it's been an honor to know her the last couple of decades. Well, tell me, tell me in your own words, why do you, why do you feel that that this wonderful lady? I mean, I could wax poetic, but you're her friend. Tell yeah. me about what she's like and what she's done, uh, really, to deserve this award. Yeah. Well, I do have some remarks, if you don't mind. Can I just please, read those please, my remarks? Take, take the floor, sir. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to give you some remarks, and then we can go a little bit back and forth, a little bit more about no, it. No, but just no, a little back, the back, yours. Yeah, a little, little background on Christine. So she's originally from Florida, and she fell in love with the Pacific Ocean, just like many of us did. Uh, she This was back in 1980s. And then in 85, that's actually when she moved out to Pacifica. So she's been a resident and a business person since then. Uh, she got her uh, real estate license because her dad, her dad, 
Richard Stahl was in the business for many, many years. And so today, to this day, Christine and her business partner, Pete Lamori, have been voted the best real estate office in Pacifica numerous times. Um, and in terms of Christine's volunteerism, she sort of began with the Pacifica Resource uh, Center uh, with the Adopt a Family Holiday Program, um, the Back to School Backpack Program, and staffing nonprofit boots at the uh, Fog Festival, like many of us have done in the community. Um, 2003, though, Christine's volunteerism expanded, and that's when she joined the Pacificans Care uh, Board of Directors. Um, and they're raising funds for the core agencies, which is, of course, Senior Services, the Pacific Resource Center, Youth Services, and, of course, the uh, Child Care Services. Um, she's been a director now for nearly two decades. And uh, each year is becoming more and more deeply involved in the community, um, seeing the needs of the Pacific uh, neighbor that she, uh, her neighborhood, and then finding ways to connect with people with services and resources available to them. Um, and really, uh, the, uh, her top thing that I'm very, very proud of is that she, with the passing of her furry friend, and his name is Ricky, she created uh, the uh, Rockaway, Ricky. Rockaway Ricky Fund. And That's right. so um, she's been created to, this was made to support the unique needs um, the, of the community, uh, the pets of Pacifica, senior families in need, and the unhoused. So through the pairing of pets and in need of her wish to honor her beloved dog, a business mascot, Rockaway Ricky, she created the Memorial Fund. And to date, they've raised fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Ten thousand dollars have yet. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Ten thousand dollars have been distributed directly to the Pacifica Se Senior Services and the Pacifica Resource Center. Um, and uh, she, she part of that is through the creating this beautiful calendar that hopefully all the residents of Pacifica actually have gotten their hands on. It's an incredible piece that she's done. Uh, I think for the last uh, maybe four or five years. Um, and then in the last year, as COVID, as we've all been impacted by COVID in our community, uh, the Rockway Fund has been able to shine, providing pets in need with funds to help with expensive medications, dental cleanings, and the most difficult end-of-life services, which is hard for all of us that are pet owners. And most importantly, Christine believes it's her destiny, and it's her destiny to serve and to give back to this beautiful place that she's proud to call her home, Pacifica. Oh, wow. Thank you for that. I can see that you're a friend indeed, because that's a lot. That's a lot. And show us that. Uh, I don't think we had it on screen. Show yes. Yeah. So we're going to we're gonna actually I'll show you three of the calendars. They're incredible hey. pieces, by the way. Um, this was the uh, first one. This, so this is Ricky. So this was done in 2019. Oh, what a cutie. Yeah. He's a, and then um, what the, the account and then she's been doing for the last the last three, four years. And ultimately what it is, it's, it's, it could be the, the cars of Pacifica. Like this one, it was the cars, people that are car owners. Yeah. And then she, she also had the one, this is one Ricky's, uh, these are like business owners. They also did business owners, but all, all the funds that were raised from this, they all went back into the fund. And then of course went right back into the community as well. Brian Kingston, I want to thank you. You're an absolute gentleman, and I want to thank you so very much for being here and for helping us to honor Christine. Christine, I'm sorry we missed you tonight. I know that she had surgery on her knee, right, not too long ago. So uh, yes. you know, Godspeed and, and uh, get well, Christine. We love you very much. We are going to take a very, very short break, and on the other side of that break, we're going to have none other then uh, our representative for this for this region, our congressional representative, Jackie Spear, who I have been trying to get on PCT honors for years now, and I am so thrilled to tell you that we've got her. So stay right there. We'll be right back with Congresswoman Jackie Spear. I'm Danielle Romero with Pacific Coast TV here at the All South right. Asian Hate Mart okay, in Pacifica Jackie. to bring you coverage. Personal incidents were shared where they and their families felt discriminated. I've been wondering how many more Asian people that look like my family and me need to be attacked and hurt and murdered to really have people rise up and stand up and say this cannot happen anymore. According to Global News, racist attacks have increased five times since the start of the pandemic. We are not the virus. And I'm here because I've been personally impacted by the hate that has been just rising. It's impacted my family, my friends, and the people I know. And I'm glad Pacifica is supporting human rights. This is, this is not about just Asian hate, but this is kind of a harbinger of things that might come. 
Dozens of Pacifica residents marched from the Pacifica Community Center to the end of the 2.5-mile Rockaway Trail. Some fuzzy supporters came along, too. Mary Beer showed the reasoning why she organized this march. Um, just, just that people won't talk about it as much as they should, and the students that I work with have been really triggered by all of this, and they're having a hard time dealing with it, and they're not sure if it's okay to voice that. Nice. Here, do you see us? We are crying out. Do you hear us? We are getting killed. Do you care? Erasure needs to end. Invisibility of Asian Americans needs to end. Silence needs to end. Thank you for joining us at the Stop Asian Hate March right here in Pacifica. I'm Daniel Romero with Pacific Coast TV. Hey everybody, welcome back to PCT Honors. Again, my name is Marty Anaya. I'm the executive director here at Pacific Coast TV. Uh, it is absolutely my thrill and honor uh, to recognize this next awardee. Um, you know, when you think about a person who's been able to do a lot for this coast side, to, that's really been able to, to make things happen. Uh, I mean, really, there's a short list, and on that short list is Jackie Spear, our, our, our United States Congresswoman for our region. And among, and, and, and I could just be here all night ticking off some of the accomplishments. Uh, I personally am a, a huge fan for what she's been able to do uh, with respect to, to trying to bring decorum back uh, to the United States Congress and to, and to the, uh, uh, the executive branch. Won't go too far into that tonight, <laughs> but let's just say that uh, we've kind of lost our way and, and uh, Jackie's one of the main reasons why we're finding it again. Uh, but one thing that's just topical and, and has been actually in the news a lot is the issue of sexual assault in the military. And that hasn't for a long time been in the news or in the minds of folks, but just recently it has. And so uh, I'm, I'm hearing now that Jackie has in the Military Defense Authorization Act finally been able to appropriate some resources to deal with this uh, this un unfortunate issue that has been swept under the rug for too long. So without further ado, let me uh, introduce our next PCT honoree, Jackie Spear. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Marty. It's so great to be with you. Uh, let me just at the very outset say um, how lucky we are to have PCT uh, in the community. I, I mean, it's very rare to have a public TV station in a community, uh, large or small. And what we do know is at a time when uh, the news is not trusted much, four out of five people in this country trust local news more than they trust uh, the cable news. And among young people between the ages of 18 and 29, uh, much more likely to trust local news. So it's important for us to keep PCT uh, alive and well. And I, I just want to give a shout out to you, Marty, and everyone associated with PCT for doing an extraordinary job. To my knowledge, uh, there isn't any other community on the peninsula that has a local TV station. I mean, maybe you could say KCSM, but um, that's radio, I think. I don't think they do much TV anymore. Um, but in any case, um, we're, we're very fortunate. As it relates to the issue of uh, military sexual assault, it's been a, a scourge in the military forever. And for 10 years, I've been trying to get these cases taken out of the chain of command and have been 
you know, hit by a brick wall. But over the last few years, we've made great uh, strides. And now there's 20,000 service members that, sexually, that are sexually assaulted each year. Only about 6,000 will report, less than 500 are subject to courts martial, and less than 250 actually serve any time. So it's really important for us to take these cases out of the chain of command so that uh, those who are victimized by sexual assault are in a position to report it. And if it's not in the chain of command where you have independent prosecutors and investigators, much more likely to happen. A, a tragic case last year uh, of a young woman, Vanessa Guillen, who was murdered and had been a victim of sexual harassment, mm -hmm. um, really brought this to a head at Fort Hood in Texas. So uh, I'm really pleased that we now have it in the Defense Authorization Act and uh, very optimistic that we are going to be changing the law as it relates to sexual assault in the military, along with issues around domestic violence and child abuse and the like, taking them all out of the chain of command. Well, Jackie, I, I want to thank you for that. And I, and I want to say, you know, again, um, just we're grateful. We're grateful to have a representative like you in Congress who really is looking out for her constituents and who really is trying to better the lives of people both locally and um, with this particular issue that you that you that you've brought to the fore. Um, you know, our, our our folks that are in in, in uniform. Um, I can't go on enough about how, um, you know, so many people pay lip service to, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be an American and, and I, I support the troops and all that, uh, but you're really putting your money where your mouth is, and we thank you for that, and, and uh, I really can't thank you enough for everything you've done here on the coast side. Again, Jackie, it is a supreme, it's our honor. We call it PCT honors. We're honoring you. It's our honor. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Well, it's my honor. And I haven't forgotten Pacifica. Pacifica has always been there for me and I am there for them. And we're working hard with the Corps of Engineers right now to get more funding to deal with the, um, the vicious ocean. As beautiful it is, sometimes it is very vicious as it hits Pacifica. And we're looking at ways to fund um, the repairs along um, the coastline in Pacifica. Sure, so, absolutely, uh, yeah. And, and for that matter, up and down the coast side, I know it's I know it's a huge issue. We serve all the way to Pescadero, and I can tell you, I hear the same complaints in Pescadero that I hear in Pacifica, that I hear in the mid coast. And so, thank you for that. Thank you for the attention to that. It's my privilege to do it. And a shout out yeah. to Ryan Kingston, who's done an incredible job on a film on. Joe Kotchat, uh, that was just released last night at the San Mateo County Historical Association dinner. Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing about that. So, uh, so watch out, Brian. You might be, you might be the next honoree if you're not careful. You might be on the hot seat. Listen, Jackie, thank you again. Uh, we can't say thank you, thank you enough. Uh, I know that you're going to be in the next couple of weeks, also appearing at the Pacifica Democrats as well. Do you have a date on that? Do you know what the date is for that? You know, I think it is later in September. I, I don't okay. have it in front of me. Well, we'll, 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 put the, we'll put the word out and make sure that everybody knows. Again, everybody, Jackie Spear, thank you so much, Jackie. We love you. Thank you, Marty. I love you, Patrick. Folks, uh, uh, wow. Okay, wow. Now, listen, my girl, Kathleen Manning, uh, speaking of history, Pacifica Historical Society, I think we've got her on here. I don't know if we can turn her video on. Do we have Kathleen's video working? Because I really need Kathleen's help here. Uh, another one of our honorees is uh, a lady uh, by the name of uh, Joanne uh, Zavarol. And Joanne Zavarol has been a, an amazing support structure uh, to PCT, to the, to, the, uh, to the folks all up and down in so many different uh, areas. Now, I think we've got our audio. We might not have our video, but Kathleen, can you hear me? I, I can hear you. All right. Well, I, I can cannot hear you, hear you very loudly. Oh, well, that's okay. As long as you can hear me, I can hear you great. Kathleen, can you talk about our dearly beloved Joanne Zavarol a little bit and, and tell us what, why, why are we honoring her this evening? Well, you know, Joanne is just one of those very special people, that little... That little dynamic redhead is how I remember her. Unfortunately, she passed away earlier this year, but 
Yeah. We will all remember all of the many things that Joanne did. She was first off, she was a mother, she was a grandmother, she was a grandmother. She was a great grandmother. Uh huh. Joanne loved Elvis Presley. She loved going to the Moose for dinner. She loved the Chit Chat Cafe. But in, and in addition to raising quite a family, she was also a longtime volunteer. She was with the Lions and did all of the wonderful charitable things that the Lions do. She was a uh, member for 30, over 30 years of Second Harvest. And the last part, the last several years, she was head of the Brown Baggers. And every Friday she spent filling bags for the needy people. This was even pre-COVID. Then I know Joanne, I, I knew her mainly through the Pacific Historical Society. And she was very, very well liked, worked hard, but she really shone when we started the castle tours. That was a big fundraiser for the Historical Society and we decided to have reenactors and Joanne volunteered to be the reenactor or the ghost of the lady of the night ah, that that was lived in the fun. castle and did she have fun with that she hammed it oh, up with boy, did we all did right and then she loved uh, like hamming it up with the ghost of Reverend Harkins <laughs> but know, you know, right. what she really did was her connection with PCT and the historical society she ran camera number three, that little tiny little lady ran camera number three for 156 shows that we did Aww. on Footprints of Pacifica. Yes. Yeah, so did. that was quite remarkable. And then I think another thing that she did was she got her daughter interested in PCT. And we know that her daughter, JoLynn Ruedis, has been quite an asset. Well, as a matter of fact, Kathleen, I actually have Joel. As a matter of fact, Joel Lynn is a member of our board of directors now. That's how much she's gotten involved. And with your permission, what I'd like to do, Joel Lynn has prepared a little uh, a little video. She couldn't be with us here live this evening, but she's got a little video. Do you, would you mind if I rolled that? Do, please. Anxious right. to see it. Absolutely. And Kathleen Manning, you are a treasure of Pacifica, books old and rare, and the Pacifica Historical Society. If folks on the coast side, if you don't know, you've got to know, and they've done amazing work with the Little Brown Church. So Kathleen, thank you very much. And without further ado, let's roll this message from JoLynn Ruedes on behalf of her mom, Joanne. All oh right. my God. This is quite an honor for my myself and my mother. My mother brought me into PCT many years ago. She was a camera woman. She worked with Helen James and James and all kinds of wonderful people. Uh, she made, they all made the, uh, oh gosh, what was it? The uh, 100th video of uh, Pacifica. And that included the old uh, Emperor Frank, and uh, they had fun making the video. So you can go back and, and flash back on the past and see some of the videos made. Uh, today is a great honor to accept my mother's award. Uh, she didn't like to be on camera or pictures taken, and the same goes with me, so I'm quite nervous. But uh, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be with PCT today. So I, I thank everyone um, for the kindness that, that they've shared for my mother, with my mother for all these years. Uh, she is greatly missed, as is Jill and James will be. So they're all up there flying together and, and watching down on us today on this beautiful day. So thank you. Pacific Coast Television provides a platform for community members to put their shows on TV. Let's take a look at some of the shows produced and aired on PCT throughout the years. Welcome to the only live primetime musical variety show on the west coast of the United States. It takes rocks 
some gravel Make a solid roof I got some real good TV tonight You ready? This is That Waves TV. Let's welcome Kathy Holly and Spotlight. Welcome to Straight Talk for Entrepreneurs, where we reveal what it really takes to build a successful business. Hi, I'm Brandon C. White, and this is Build a Business Success Secrets. I had to do a special, I think I'm going to call this a season finale with my pal of pals, Mary Beer is in the house. How are you, Mary? Hi, if you have an idea for a show and want to get your message out to the world, PCT can make it happen. For more information, please visit PacificCoast.tv and sign up to become a member. Let's make your show a reality. And we're live. All right, folks, we are back. Uh, this is Marty Anaya. And if you're just tuning in, you're watching PCT Honors 2021. And Pacific Coast TV, as I mentioned, has been here for 44 years as a nonprofit supporting you, supporting this coast side, and vital uh, vocational training for our communities. You know, um, it's 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 this is the 21st century, and we are a 21st century training uh, resource. And uh, one of the ways, I mean, you've seen the programming. I mean, you just saw that spot there. But one of the things that we also do is we train interns and the people that are going to take these 21st century jobs of the future. And um, I have two of my interns actually right now. I have Alyssa and Will uh, to join me on the call. Hey, Alyssa and Will, are you guys there? Uh, yeah, hi. We're hey. here. Good to see you guys. Now listen, um, I wanna I wanna go ahead and ask you guys uh, to talk a little bit about what it's like, what your internship is like here at PCT. And then I'd like to know a little bit about what you guys are hoping to do in the future. And, and uh, after that, you know, feel free to uh, to throw it out to break for us since you guys are broadcast students, okay? All right, guys, take it away. Well, okay. All right. Um, All right. Go ahead, Will. I'll let okay. you start. Um, all right, so I've got a question for you. Uh, I, I was wondering, uh, well, we were talking about this. What led to you taking the internship with PCT? Yeah, so PCT, this internship actually marks kind of a career pivot for me a little bit. Um, I have a graphic design degree, and but lately over the past year, year and a half or so, I've become really um, into the media and the news world, and I wanted to sharpen my, my skills in writing, communication, um, you know, doing graphics for not just print and digital like I was used to, but also for TV, learning a new skill like that and just learning the biz of the, the media and, and TV world. So this is my first introduction to everything. I'm immensely enjoying it and I'm excited for all that's to come next. How about you? Uh, yeah, wow, that's awesome. Uh, I'm actually still in college right now. I'm a senior at Boston College. Um, and I actually became interested in being a production intern because I was at first interested in writing for TV or being a performer. Um, and so I wanted to know the production side a little bit better. Um, but since I've begun here, I've honestly become a lot more interested in the production side. And I think after college, I'm looking to maybe start as a PA or something like that. Yeah, that's awesome. I share a similar career interest. I'm also interested as one of, uh, one of the paths for me as well. Um, yeah, so in this internship, well, what do you think are some of the skills that you developed while being here with PCT as an intern? Um, I think one thing I didn't expect to develop that I have actually gotten a lot better at was graphic design. Um, I had already been interested in aesthetics and I'd studied that in some of my uh, school work, but I think actually doing a lot of hands-on promotional graphics um, has really gotten me even more interested in that. And it's also, I think, a pretty widely applicable job skill. Uh, and along with that, I, um, I'm also uh, more interested in video editing now. I, I actually got to put together a piece that um, was on our magazine intern-run show, Coast Life. Um, and so that's been really great. Uh, I think I'm a lot better at those things now. Uh, what about you? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, everything from graphic design for TV, video editing, which is pretty new to me. 
Um, this is definitely my first uh, my first time learning how to do all that and diving head first in, figuring it out. I love it. Um, and now we're doing stuff like this, kind of like a little segment co-hosting back and forth. So this is really fun. Community outreach we do all the time within the co-side community. Um, PR skills, we got improving our written and verbal communication skills, which is extremely important in uh, today's day and age. And we also got social media marketing, which is also really huge in today's day and age. I, I'm finding it in every job description that you're looking at, kind of it spreads to all areas, no matter what you're, what kind of job you're looking for. They all want the, the social media skills and marketing. So we're right on target there. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then one final question, what have you taken away from interning at PCT, would you say? Yeah. So one of my biggest things, which I felt right before I joined too, and when I learned more about PCT, was definitely how important it is to start local. If I want to make my way in the news and media world and work my way up, it is so important to start right where we're at right now, right in the local area. That's where everything happens. You know, you can't have a, a good city, a good state, a good country without focusing on what's going on local and keeping a strong, tight-knit, positive community there. And PCT, you know, I'm actually all the way on the on the East Coast here, so I'm getting to know what the community is like over here and how things are done here and all the cool activities and stuff you guys have got going on and. Uh, and uh, the coast side. So this has really given me a, a new perspective and it's so important to keep the public education and government local and easily accessible to all the uh, locals in the community for sure. How about you? Um, yeah, I think I have learned a lot about uh, the TV world, it's inner workings. There's something Marty says a lot, uh, quick, fast, and in a hurry, and I had to get used to that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm used to moving on my own time. Um, and the other thing I would say is the importance of uh, public access, or we call it PEG or PEG media. Um, I think, uh, think uh, groups like PCT allow so many local voices to be heard that wouldn't have been heard otherwise. Um, and I think sure. that's something I didn't really know about until this internship. Um, I think with that, well, yeah, let's just throw it to break. Uh, yeah. Uh, stay tuned because after this, we actually have some awesome uh, children's programming from PCT. Pacific Coast TV has been connecting the San Mateo Coast side through public education and government access television since 1977. As your local media center, we have provided a home for local personalities, performers, and artists to share their craft through one-of-a-kind programming. Shake that thing. Many ongoing television series have called PCT home throughout the years. But you know what I mean. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you, thank you very much.
What is? Is she here? Consistent coverage of local events and government meetings continue to bring the community closer together. PCT needs you now more than ever. The business complex housing PCT has been sold. Our individual unit is being offered for sale. We urgently need your donations to help keep PCT in its home. Please donate today by calling 650-355-8000 and leaving a message. Or visit our website at www.pacificcoast.tv to donate online now. We truly appreciate your help. Now, back to the show. PCT is honoring James Parsons, who passed away earlier this year. James initially came to PCT as a volunteer through Footprints of Pacifica. He was passionate about training new members, and he worked on hundreds of studio productions throughout the years. We are proud to recognize his legacy of dedication to PCT and the Coastside. Since 2002, local realtor Christine Stahl has served on the board of directors of Pacificans Care, a nonprofit that supports community-based social services. PCT honors Stahl for her many years of service to Pacifica and its people. PCT is honoring Robbie Bancroft, who is the host of a podcast called Robbie's World, co-founder of Breakers Restaurant, and singer of a band called Obsolete Man, for contributing to Pacifica by helping those in need and making our community a happier place for everybody. Since 1962, Michael and Lewis Jacopi have helped countless local businesses and farmers markets. PCT would like to honor Jacopi Farms for their exemplary service to the community through their produce. PCT has recognized Jill Reed, who passed away this past February. She dedicated her work to communities throughout San Francisco and Oakland. She worked as a director for the Salvation Army Harbor Light Center, helping people find solutions to drug and alcohol addiction. PCT is honored to recognize all she has done. Joanne Zavaral was a longtime supporter of local organizations, a friend of PCT, and a dedicated volunteer at the Second Harvest Food Bank. Her gentle spirit touched so many lives, and PCT honors her for the positive impact she made on the community. The Oropesa family have been a staple of Half Moon Bay ever since opening Half Moon Bay Joe's in 2002. From sponsoring a Little League team to hosting food drives, they have always made sure that the entire community feels like just another part of the family. PCT is honoring Scott Morrow for guiding our community's COVID-19 response as San Mateo County's health officer. For his services to keeping the Bay Area safe and healthy, we thank Morrow for his dedication and hard work. Susan Getra Wallace has a long career in promoting the prosperity of the coast side and has an admirable history of volunteer work that continues today. PCT is proud to honor Susan for her continued work toward advancing the wellness of our community and its members. PCT is honoring Jackie Spear, a Bay Area native. She is a successful politician who is currently serving as a U.S. representative for California's 14th Congressional District. Jackie is a member of the Democratic Party and has been serving since 2008. 
Council Member Joaquin Jimenez was elected last November to the Half Moon Bay City Council, the first Latino ever elected. A teacher, a volunteer, and an avid supporter of nonprofits, we are honoring him for all the good he's done and continues to do in the Coastside community. Mike's cute. Hey everybody, uh, we are back. And if you are just joining us, you are here watching PCT Honors. And PCT, of course, stands for Pacifica Community Television. That's what we started out as. Uh, literally almost 45 years ago as a nonprofit organization serving the coastline. And since then, we've grown beyond Pacifica, and now we serve the entire coastline, all the way down to Pescadero here in San Mateo County. And of course, we get viewers from literally all around the world and people who really want to know what's going on in the San Francisco Bay Area, want to know where the best places are to eat. Like, for example, Half Moon Bay Joe's which I like to go to every time I am in Half Moon Bay and enjoy myself. And again, folks, all of this is brought to you because of people like you, all right? It's people like you that staff it. Most of, most of the people that literally work here are volunteers. It's people like you that come in and do your own shows. And on this evening, as we're recording, it just so happens that this is the 20th anniversary of 9-11 of as we're recording this. So as you watch it in replays, understand that as we're honoring our local coastsiders, uh, we're also uh, paying homage and honoring those people who have sacrificed, given the ultimate sacrifice, both here and, of course, uh, at, the, at that tragic event that we that we now have come to know as 9-11. As so this is what's informing us, and this is what's, I think, driving us. And I can just say personally, this is what drives me every day to excel and do better and support this coast site and support the people here. Because it, as, as our intern said, as you just heard Alyssa say, it starts local. It all starts locally, and then it goes out from there. And if you can have an impact on your local community, you can have an impact on the world. Now, speaking of which, the next two uh, honorees we're going to present to you by video. And these two honorees, these, these, these folks, there's actually three of them, a father and son team and uh, our, our county health officer. In their own way, each of them has been instrumental in supporting our county and supporting the South Coast uh, in Half Moon Bay, uh, the Mid Coast, and all the way down to Pescadero. So without further ado, let me introduce these two uh, next honorees via video, and I'll see you on the other side. Next up on our PCT honorees list is Luis Jacopi and his son, Mike Jacopi. The Jacopis are being recognized for their work in the community by providing Pacifica locals and nearby neighbors their fresh produce every week at the Ferry Plaza and Mission Community Farmers Market. While at first, Jacopi farms used to sell to larger markets, they've recently decided to shift to a direct-to-consumer model in order to reduce prices for their buyers. Jacopi Farms covers about 200 acres and is located here in Half Moon Bay, right next to the Half Moon Bay Airport. Through the years, it's been an essential provider to not only locals looking to pick up vegetables for their next meal, but also to over 80 local Bay Area restaurants. Mike and Luis are dedicated Half Moon Bay farmers. Originally moving from Italy in 1939, the Jacopis moved their farm to Half Moon Bay in 1979 and have kept their family business in the Bay ever since. Jacobi Farm faces difficult problems throughout the seasons, such as lack of water supply, poor soil condition, and rusted equipment due to the local fog. Through these tribulations, however, the Jacobis are devoted to staying in Half Moon Bay and continue to provide important resources to their homes. While they're unable to attend tonight, PCT recognizes Luis and Mike, as well as the rest of the Jacobi family for their incredible hard work and service to the community. Next up on PCT Honors is Dr. Scott Morrow, San Mateo's Chief Health Officer. Dr. Morrow has been a health officer for San Mateo since 1992. His responsibilities include leading San Mateo County in response to matters such as disease outbreak, 
promoting disease prevention, and enforcing public health laws and regulations amongst the community. During this past year, Dr. Morrow has faced challenges dealing with unprecedented situations due to the coronavirus and lockdown. He's been charged with making difficult policy decisions amid constantly changing and difficult circumstances, and has been a beacon of accurate information during this challenging period. He was one of the first to advise back in early March of 2020 that all non-essential gatherings should be canceled, and was featured in the New York Times for his firm bulletins he posted to help guide the county through COVID-19. Through the pandemic, the community has looked to Dr. Morrow for guidance and advice as to what they can expect in the future. While Dr. Morrow is unable to be here to accept the award, PCT would like to recognize and thank Scott Morrow for his leadership and guidance of San Mateo County through this global pandemic. Wow, I just want to say so, so much uh, thanks and gratitude uh, for the Jacobis and, of course, uh, for for Scott Morrow, the county health officer here in San Mateo County. And it and, uh, looks like we've got Stephanie, our yeah. uh, PCT board vice president and, of course, representative of Half Moon Bay. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, how are you doing? Stephanie, I'm doing Beautiful. great this evening. This and, is a really uh, great show. I gotta show. tell you, um, thank you for, 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 for joining us this evening. You know, it's, everything's been so weird this year with COVID stuff. Uh, and we've had to do so many things like, so for example, you know, you know, you might notice some of the video quality isn't what it's used to be in, but what we're having to do to bring you this show and to bring you all of our shows, uh, we've never stopped. We, in fact, during COVID, we went even harder here at PCT to give you more and to, and to hopefully not only not lose a step, but to, but to, to really put, put the pedal to the metal because so many people can't get together that this is the way that we get together now. Because literally, I have nobody in the studio right now. It's it's just me and Jason and a few of our staffers. But we want to do the right thing. And so, Stephanie, thank you for joining us in this capacity. Sure. Now, I understand you have a uh, a wonderful uh, Half Moon Bay honoree that you would like to introduce. Is that right? That's exactly right. Well, well, Stephanie, the floor is yours. Take it away. I am so proud to introduce Pablo Oropezo Jr. And um, I'm also honored because he took me under his wing about maybe 15 years ago. And I, after I closed one of my restaurants and I came to work for this beautiful family who took me in and I and just part of the family now. I love these guys, and that's why I really know that they deserve to be honored because they are the heart of Half Moon Bay. They really are, and I just love these guys. So, Pablo, where are you? Where is he? Where is he? I'm here. I'm here, Stephanie. Many thanks for uh, for giving me this opportunity to thank the whole community in the coast side for allowing uh, us to operate our business here in their community and being a, a great part of their community every day from uh, breakfast to dinner. Yeah. Um, people like you made this a special establishment. Um, many thanks to all the co-workers that I've gone through here and my father especially for his hard work and all of the uh, communities. Just, they've been very supportive through these good times and bad times. So I'm very thankful for all of you. Well, you know, Pablo, this is the one thing. I've worked, you know, 40 years in the business. I've been in all the restaurants. And, you know, when I walk through the doors, because it, it was a different time, you know, everybody was hiring on the internet. I walked through the door, and I'll never forget that you looked at my resume, you talked to me personally, and you said, my father always told me that if somebody good walks through that door, you hire them immediately. And you I did. did, and I've lost track. I think we're 15 years or so in our relationship. It's a lifetime now. We're family. And yes. I have sat by and watched through the good, the bad, you know, and just how much people love you and how much you guys love the community. You escort the elderly to the door. You send them home with too much food or give them more food when there's a loss in, in the family. I mean, everybody looks for the graduations, for the celebrations and the good times and the bad times. And you guys are always there. And even through, you took a year off during this 2020, you guys are back at it better than ever. And you guys are what make me love 
the restaurant business because it's all hard. It's much more than just serving food. It's relationships in the community and you have it. He has it. it I'm so proud of you guys. And I'm so really grateful to be in the Orpezo family because I know I am and I love you and your dad and your whole family, everybody. It is such a wonderful place. So thank you. I'm so glad you guys are here. And um, I just can't even give the words for what I've watched in 15 years with the people that have come through and the love that they've shown you and the love. I, I mean, we are like hugging people and they're hugging us. You know, the relationships we had and the coming and the going and the tears and the laughter. We laughed our way through the place. And I know you still do. And it's just wonderful. And thank you. Thank you very much, Pablo. I love you guys so much. Thank, Thank you, Steph. You. Love you guys too. Yeah. All right. So. Well, you know what? Uh, and I also want to add a couple of other little factoids because I just happen to know uh, Stephanie kind of touched on it briefly, but uh, you guys have done everything from you know support uh, the little league and and the kids when they come in to support their fundraisers. You've been supporting, as Stephanie mentioned, uh, when uh, people have had a hard time, and we know there have been instances where people couldn't get enough food, and you've been there to give them free food and to do things in the community. So it's all that community service work on top of the the wonderful way that you treat your 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 employees, your staff, and your and your patrons. That is the reason why we want to honor you tonight. So again, Pablo, tell your dad uh, thanks. I'll be in there very soon. I'll try to drag Dave Preston in there with me, and uh, we'll have breakfast. And uh, uh, that's my favorite meal of the day. So I'll be in there to to frequent your establishment. And I thank you so very much, brother. Thank you. That's breakfast in town. All right. right. Thank you, guys. All right. Now, without further ado, I have. Let's see if I'm if I'm where I think I am. We were talking a little bit earlier about how tough it's been during COVID. Okay, and one of the things that PCT has done is we 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 created a resource database during COVID, which was the idea of yes, where to go get your shot, uh, where to go get testing, all these kinds of things, but also uh, how to. Um, how to really, um, how do I put this? Everything, everything from where to get food, where, where to go to a food bank, you know, all these kinds of things. That is the idea, and that's what we're trying to do. And um, my hope is, my hope is that people uh, will will avail themselves of this of this resource. We've been putting it out there for a long time. It's right there on our website. But one of the things that we wanted to do, especially during the time when people were insulated. Think about this, there was a long period of time when you didn't even wanna go outside of your door. Maybe you would venture out to go to the store, but there was a long period of time where a lot of people were insulated and isolated. So we started this thing called COVID Chronicles, and we've done several of them. I'm gonna show you one of them right now, just to give you an example of what PC try, PCT has tried to do to help bring the community together during this ter terribly difficult time. And we'll see you right back here on the other side. So watch this, we'll be right back. As a principal of a school here in Mountain View serving preschool through eighth grade students, there was a lot of uncertainty about COVID-19 coronavirus at the very beginning. It seemed that there was something over in Asia and we were uncertain about what was really happening with it. But it soon became apparent that we needed to start planning as the cases here started at nine and 14 and went up and up quickly. We needed to adapt while making sure that our students were still cared for. Our school cares immensely about the social, emotional, and spiritual well-being along with the academics of each child. The school's been very different without the children and the teachers and the parents. We miss our community here. Our school is all about community and without the laughter and the salutations of everyone walking through the halls, it's quite empty. Of course, we all want to get back to normal as soon as possible, but we also want to help to support every effort to end this in the right way and to protect as many lives as possible. 
Our students and teachers have been working now for quite some time to make sure that their education continues despite the fact that they're all stuck at home. Next year might be a little bit different. We're still uncertain of what that will look like, whether it be different regulations of how many people can be in the building or it may simply be the impact of um, different cleaning and practices of social distancing in our school. Regardless of what it looks like, we're happy to be here as a community supporting each one of our members and working to ensure that education continues despite all circumstances. Pacific Coast Television provides a platform for community members to put their shows on TV. Let's take a look at some of the shows produced and aired on PCT throughout the years. Welcome to the only live primetime musical variety show on the west coast of the United States. It takes rocks and gravel. Make a solid room. I got some real good TV tonight. You ready? This is That Waves TV. Let's welcome Kathy Holly and Spotlight. Welcome to Street Talk for Entrepreneurs, where we reveal what it really takes to build a successful business. Hi, I'm Brandon C. White, and this is Build a Business Success Secrets. I had to do a special, I think I'm going to call this a season finale with my pal of pals, Mary Beer is in the house. How are you, Mary? Hi, if you have an idea for a show and want to get your message out to the world, PCT can make it happen. For more information, please visit PacificCoast.tv and sign up to become a member. Let's make your show a reality. Again, uh, uh, Martin and I here, uh, PCT Honors, and um, again, you know, you're going to see this show repeat, uh, but as we're recording here tonight, it is September 11th, and, um, you know, it was a lot of challenges this year. There were so many challenges. We thought, do we want to do an awards show on September 11th? And then we thought, yes, we do, because it's, again, and I've said this previously, but I'll say it again. It, we're honoring people who are community heroes. And on September 11th, that's what we're doing. We're honoring those people and we're remembering those people, the fallen heroes and some of those who are, thank God, still with us, but who lived through that terrible time. And the hope is, is that when, when tragedy strikes, it brings us together. And hopefully it doesn't take tragedy to do that. Many, many things can bring a community get together. Um, you know, I, uh, my, my family uh, is all from New Mexico and um, we are uh, uh, an old clan and, and, uh, and the type of folks that know what it means to, to, to stick together and know the value of that. And I got to tell you that, that when, I, when I think about this next honoree, I think about what he's done for his community, 
uh, for the people within the community and to help bridge the divide between cultures, between uh, uh, you know languages and understanding, bridge the gap of understanding. Uh, I don't know if we have him here, but we do have uh, the campaign manager. Uh, Joaquin Jimenez is, of course, uh, the uh, a councilman now for the city of Half Moon Bay. And uh, last night I had the privilege and the honor to talk to his campaign manager and one of his dear friends, uh, Phil. Uh, is, is, is Phil with us? Is, are you here yet, Phil? No? Okay. We're not here now. All right, not problem. No problem. Well, Phil, uh, I know that uh, I know that you wanted to be here tonight. I know that you wanted to introduce Joaquin, but I'll go ahead and and, and step in for you because uh, this is what I'm telling you, folks. What I've witnessed and what I've seen a hundred times in many different communities is that it just takes one person, one person who can step up and say, "Hey, you know what? There may be a gap of understanding. There may be uh, a problem with." Uh, the culturas that come together or sometimes butt heads, right? In, in, in my experience with my family in New Mexico, it was, uh, again, uh, New Mexico was at one time owned by the country of Mexico. And then it became a United States territory. And when that happened, there were many conflicts, not just with the Anglos and the, the Hispanos, but also with the native peoples and the indigenous cultures. But it's how you bring those things together that make a community. And this gentleman, I have watched from afar. We've met uh, just on a couple of occasions, but I'm always just delighted and honored to see what he has been able to do to bring this coastside community together. And of course, I'm talking again about the uh, city councilman for Half Moon Bay, Mr. Joaquin Jimenez. Joaquin, are you there? Yes. Uh, hold on. Good to see you, bro. And, and let me ask you, who are these two people, these lovely people on your side? Looks like one of them just took off. No, no, you go ahead and hit the button again. You, you were, we can hear you before. Hi, uh, there you go, you got it. Hello, uh, good, good evening. Uh, uh, Joaquin Jimenez, yes, uh, my father, Felix Jimenez, and my mom. Uh, Felix, con mucho gusto, señor y señora. Mucho gusto, igual, igual. And uh, we are very honored uh, to be here today. You know, thank you for the invitation, for being, uh, for honoring us. I say us because it's not just me. It's a it's a community of half from Bay, uh, especially my parents, uh, my family, my kids. That we've been uh, in the in the area. My father came to half from Bay back in '79. You know, to work in the nursery uh, men's exchange in half from Bay. So did my mom later on, and uh, they brought us over uh, in '87, and I've been here since. So it is, uh, it is an honor uh, to be the first uh, Mexican immigrant uh, to be recognized and to be a, the first city council member in Nahum Bay. And that is with the support of the community. You know, this is not something that I did by myself. Uh, I, I'm well uh, connected with the community. As you know, I work with, uh, with Alas in Nahum Bay, uh, Dr. Evelinda Riaga. Uh, who pretty much, you know, it's a, uh, it's an angel of the community. And with her guidance and uh, the friendship and the, you know, the responsibility that we have, you know, for our community, uh, we are also founding members of the Latino Advisory Council uh, came together uh, back in uh, 2004, uh, 2014. And, uh, and as that, we continue to speak up uh, for the community that don't have a voice, and right now we amplifying the voice uh, of our farm worker community, or essential workers. As you know, uh, 2020 was not an easy year for anybody, oh, you know, especially yes. for uh, for farm worker community or essential workers. You know, in Alas, uh, we were on the front line. Uh, we became organized, and, and we grew. You know, we started with you know with four staff. Uh, right now, a year and a half later, uh, we are, you know, a, a 16 staff. But Alas is an organization that came together uh, in 2011. You know, since then, uh, we've been growing. I was a volunteer with Alas. You know, uh, Belinda and I have been, you know, friends for a long time. And he just came to the, to, uh, to the time to me for me to be staff, you know, under Alas. Uh, as you remember, uh, 2019, one of the nurseries in Half Bay uh, shut the doors, and we had about uh, 250 people, 
you know, became unemployed. And, mm -hmm. and we started to mobilize together with the city of Bay, with the Cano San Mateo, and other organizations, and Alas, you know, took a front line uh, right before uh, before COVID. So with that, it gave us the opportunity. In uh, 2019, 2020, I was also recognized uh, as a role model of the year. You know, oh, wow. I live in the community. I have been an advocate for the community for over 20 years. I have worked in the school district, you know, here in Half Bay for several years. Uh, I worked in the juvenile probation and then came to work, you know, uh, with our community, with the nonprofit organizations. So, you know, the work that I do, uh, it's, uh, it's with the support, you know, I see the diverse community, uh, the support came from across the community, not just from the Latino community, because I'm not only representing the Latino community, I'm representing everybody in the country. That's right. Not only half of them. Uh, That's right. Yes, yeah, to the benefit that I am uh, uh, fluent bilingual in Spanish and uh, in English. And I can I, I can communicate. Uh, as you know, I am very uh, visible in the community. You'll find me, you know, uh, taking uh, walks uh, downtown, uh, riding my horse uh, on the beach, on the trails. I have seen you riding your horse on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I want to say one more thing, my friend. We have we've got Phil. Uh, Phil came in, and I want to bring him into the conversation. Phil Marshall, please unmute yourself so we can talk to you because this wonderful gentleman and his family. Um, I know that uh, he's explaining about some of the things that he's done, but I want you, if you if you don't mind, to, to add your voice to this. Can you just tell us a little bit about why you supported this guy and why you supported him for the for the city council? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be, I'd be glad to. Um, I've actually only known Joaquin for um, a bit over a year. Uh, it's been quite the year. <laughs> um, I guess when we when we heard he was running for um, Half Moon Bay City Council, um, a few of us who were in a group called Coastside Families Taking Action, uh, we asked him to meet with us um, to see how we could help. And I came away from that that first uh, evening listening to Joaquin and his vision for our town. And I remember thinking, um, well, wow, candidates like this don't come along very often. Um, so time, time to go all in. So I guess I got to know Joaquin pretty well over the three months of the campaign. And I'd say he's a, a truly remarkable man. I spent my, uh, my whole professional life in large scientific collaborations. So I know a good collaborator when I see one. And um, I think Joaquin is one of the best. He believes um, deeply in the necessity and power of community and has this knack of saying yes in, in just the right ways so that everyone working with him knows, knows they're contributing. So it, it didn't take long to, to pick up on um, on, uh, on the, the quality of the, the guy we were working with. Well, Phil, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to that that I, here's how I know that Joaquin is doing the right thing is because he has friends like you, my friend, and uh, and 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 what you guys have done, and what you've been able to do to open up Half Moon Bay to make it more accessible to uh, Spanish-speaking community. Uh, and I know that firsthand because we've been part of the part of the way that that has happened. Uh, but it's something that has come to us through, I think, in large part, your leadership uh, in, ter in terms of making it happen. So again, uh, I wanna thank the both of you and uh, and I wanna thank your parents and everybody uh, associated with you because you've done so many wonderful things for this community. Joaquin, it is our amazing pleasure and honor to, to, to recognize you tonight for PCT Honors. Thank you. Thank, thank you guys, you. thank you, my friends. Folks, uh, it doesn't get any better than that. These are some amazing people, and uh, and I got to tell you, it just it just it really doesn't get any better than that. Um, what we're going to do right now? Let me see. I just want to make sure. I'm going to run out to a short little video. Uh, one of the organizations in Half Moon Bay that is really servicing the coast side is called Senior Coast Siders. We're going to run out to a little video about Senior Coast Siders, and we'll be right back. Stay right there. Hi, this is Cristobal Fierros, an intern at Pacific Coast Television. As we continue to practice social distancing, the senior co-siders have been managing to adjust by eliminating activities and programs. We interview Executive Director Sandra Winter as senior co-siders as she addresses community involvement and self-care. Typically, volunteer here are older adults themselves, and volunteering gives them an opportunity to do something that gives them purpose and meaning. Um, it's a great way for them to socialize. Again, because of COVID, we have a modified 
volunteer schedule where we're really using only a small hard core of individuals who are very experienced. And the reason behind that is we want to limit the number of contacts with different people that our participants have. In terms of self-care is we have a very extensive distribution network set up for our meals. So before COVID, we had two driving routes, one to the north of town, one to the south of town, and then a walking route around our campus because Senior Coastside is, is located in a housing campus that has housing provided by three different nonprofit organizations, Mercy Housing, Leslie Community Services, and MidPen. When COVID happened and we transitioned all of our participants to receiving home delivered meals and took on new participants from the community who were now sheltering in place, we increased the number of meal routes to seven. So every meal that goes out, we develop an insert uh, uh, and it could be one, two, three pages long. And it has all sorts of information that help our participants to do self-care. So it gives, you know, recommendations on how to avoid being depressed and um, how to exercise safely. Um, there are jokes, there are letters from the community. Sometimes the volunteer who drops off the meal might be the only person that that homebound person sees. Um, so it's a very important way of staying connected and part of that is encouraging self-care. So that if there is an opportunity where we can help that they know who to call. I would say that's that's one of the most important things. All right, folks, we are back. It is PCT Honors right here on PCT, Pacific Coast Television, your community media voice. And speaking of community media, I am joined by the lovely and talented Cheryl Amateur. Hi, Cheryl, how are you? Hi, Marty. I'm enjoying tonight's program so much. Everything. Oh, good. Glad. I'm glad. Your You're interns. <laughs> your interns. My goodness. They're rocking it tonight. And on They're the rocking it. Our whole staff yeah. is just putting it. And look, and look, this is trying because this is not normally how we, like I said, I've said it before. You hear me say it again. This is this COVID way of doing things here. I've got to have you. I mean, normally I'd have you in the studio. We'd be breaking bread. We'd be having pizza, right? That's right. And I'd look a lot shorter. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the one good thing of, you know, I can't tell. Nobody can tell. But let me tell you this. Um, what we can tell, you are part of uh, uh, and our chairperson for our Keeping Community Media in Our Community campaign. And folks, what I'm referring to, basically, that's the nice way of saying, hey, we're trying to keep our house here. Yes. Because uh, as everybody knows, PCT has been sold. Well, let me back up. The complex that houses PCT, the Presby Business Center, has been sold. And the new landlord is dividing it, is subdividing it. So yes, it's scary, but there's an opportunity here, right, Cheryl? There's always an opportunity. And real estate is part of life. So you need good people to help you figure these things out. And we need all of you good people to help us make the right decisions and be in a forever home. And, and you can do that by donating. There's a donate button. And because what we're going to do is we're gonna to try to raise the money to buy this unit. And think about this, as scary as that is, if this nonprofit could do that, if we could raise enough money to buy this unit, guess what folks? Just like what Cheryl said, you've got a forever home and you have an appreciating asset that that doesn't cost you more over time, but makes you more over time. And that means that we can give it back to this community. So we do encourage you to get involved uh, and, and, and help us out. And Cheryl, you've been instrumental in making that happen. Now, one of the other voices that has been instrumental in making that happen is the lady that you want to introduce as our next honoree, am I right? That would be absolutely correct. Well, Cheryl, I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to uh, let it be an A and B conversation between you and our wonderful next honoree, and I'm going to see my way out of it. 
Well, thank you so much, Marty. And it is absolutely a delight to make this introduction. The Coastside community has a diverse blend of locals and those who come from around the globe to live in one of the prettiest places on earth. Our next honoree helps people make the dream of owning a home here come true. As a realtor and local business owner, Susan Getchell Wallace has been helping her clients make informed decisions along their journey to home ownership for over 43 years. Susan's family moved to the coast side in 1954, purchasing a newly built Lindemar Rancher using financing benefits provided to World War II veterans. They paid $10,100 for their little house by the sea, where Susan attended local schools, graduating from Terra Nova High School and Skyline College. Susan believes in finding her clients the perfect home or helping a seller through the process of marketing because it's an honorable privilege. She feels that home ownership equals security and empowerment, stabilizing and bringing diversity to our communities. And I am here to attest to that. In 2013, my family moved here from Dallas and rented a mind-numbingly expensive house in San Francisco. Francisco. Before our one-year lease was up, we decided to try and buy a home in Pacifica. Luckily, Susan and her partner, Lorena Diaz, at Caldwell Banker Fahey Properties were the first people we met on that quest. There was a tiny window of opportunity and fierce competition but they made all the right moves. And in one week and one day, we had a contract on our little house by the sea. 15 years ago, Susan decided that it was time to give back to her profession and her community, staying true to her commitment. She is a past president of the San Mateo County Association of Realtors and has continued to serve on their board since 2008. She continues to serve as a trustee for the Sam Carr Foundation, a charitable nonprofit that provides grants throughout San Mateo County to other nonprofit organizations providing housing and housing related services. Susan has also continued to serve as a director for the California Association of Realtors since 2008. Her heart led her to serve on other community boards like the Pacifica Library Foundation, the President's Council at Skyline College, and the Housing Leadership Council of San Mateo County. Susan continues to serve on the board of the Pacifica Daily City Democrats and is the immediate past president. Susan is also the immediate past president of Kaminar, a community-based agency that has provided high quality prevention, treatment and recovery services to those with complex mental health, substance use and co-occurring needs for more than 50 years. Kaminar serves 18,000 people annually in San Mateo, Santa Clara, San Francisco, Solano and Butte counties. Right now, PCT is looking to Susan for guidance as we face critical decisions about the future of our home here in Pacifica. I would share more about this remarkable and tireless woman, but we have a schedule. So let me leave you with Susan's secret for success in real estate or in any venture in life. Don't ask. What's in it for me? Ask, how can I help? Ladies and gentlemen, I am so thrilled to present PCT honoree, Susan Getchell Wallace. 
Oh, oh, thank you so thank you so much, Cheryl. My goodness, <laughs> what an intro! Uh, I'm truly honored to be a nominee this year, and throughout my professional career and community involvement, I've had the privilege of working with so many wonderful people. Uh, I've had the privilege of introducing our community to people from all over the world. Uh, it's such a joy to have clients become friends and neighbors. Uh, I've continued. I continue to have the privilege of working with so many outstanding community leaders who continuously give up their time, skills, and support in an effort to make a difference. With every organization I've been involved with, I've always considered myself a team member. So I'd like to take the opportunity to thank a thank the few local people who have worked tirelessly over the years and certainly have enriched my life, okay? Uh, Pacifica Library Foundation team, Ellen Ron, Sue Beckmeyer, Eric Rasheems, Linda Jonas, Caroline Barbara, and James H. James Crow, and Mike O'Neill, and Sue Vardalos, and so many others who have worked tirelessly to bring us a, a, a 21st century living, uh, 21st century learning center library. And uh, we're not quite there yet, but not quite there yet, but not for lack of effort. Um, uh, the Pacifica Daily City Democrats board, amazing. Uh, I thank them so much. H.J. Crow again, and uh, Di, uh, Connie Menefee, Marianne Plum, Joan Putz, and Caroline Barbara again. And members, we did it, okay? We survived trans transitioning uh, to virtual meetings and uh, uh, learning how to Zoom. We continue to provide relevant content, okay? And the Kaminar board, I won't list everyone there, but I have my heart is the there. They helped my brother, um, the Kaminar organization helped my brother with services that provided life changing, life changing for him. He suffered his entire life with mental illness, and I'm so grateful to them. And of course, my team at the office, Dennis Fahey and uh, Lorena Diaz, I don't know what I would do without them, and my family, my dear son, Dewey and Heather, and my family in England. Okay, thank you so much. I am so honored to this evening, and uh, my life has been so enriched by my involvement in being involved with my community. Thank you. writing the copy okay We're live. You, yes that was you got it that was absolutely gorgeous but you know what it was a challenge to try to cover everything that susan has done for the community oh i bet oh i bet you did a great job oh my gosh she makes it anyways she makes it no, a no, thank job. you so very much that was wonderful that was wonderful oh and, and what we're back on the air already oh my goodness are we back on the air did you guys just like yeah. just sneak, sneak me back on the air while i was thanking those guys cheryl thank you so very much again and and again thank you uh susan gutcher wallace all right so we have one more honoree this evening all right and as he takes a big gulp of water here i'm putting him on blast I love this guy, but you know what? I can't introduce him. I got to have somebody else that I love introduce him. Where is Mary Beer? Is Mary Beer here with us? I'm here. There she is. Hi, Mary. Hey, Marty. How's it going? I was kidding Mary off air. I hope it was off air. I was kidding. I was like, I think I saw a unicorn. You and I, we so rarely see each other anymore. I know that you are crazy, crazy busy. And I, you know that I'm crazy, crazy busy with everything yeah. got going on here, trying to keep a roof over our heads. But how have you been? I'm good. And Marty, you know I always got your back. Oh, well, we, that's why we love you. Not that we needed a reason, but um, but no, I know it's 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 tough to, to, to see people that you love sometimes because they are so crazy busy. And by the way, folks, if you ever want to get anything done, give it to a busy person, right? You know that, right? Not that, not that Mary doesn't have a sack on her desk already, but Mary, Ooh. tell me about this wonderful, wonderful last honoree here. Can you tell us a little bit about this gentleman? 
I will. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first, I do want to shout out to Joaquin, who is my friend and colleague. So I just wanted to make sure I did that real quick. Hey. Okay, so yeah, hello everyone. It is like my my pleasure and honor to be here to introduce to you my pal of all pals, Robbie Bancroft. You know, I, I have never met anyone who is so passionate about wanting to make Pacifica a better place. Robbie does things like stops on the street and talks to a small business owner and connects them to resources, which by the way, he did just today. You know, that's just how Robbie is. He just wants to give back. So Robbie was born and raised here in Pacifica. He's a manor boy. He played baseball at Fairway Park and he played basketball at Good Shepherd, Go Blazers. He, uh, <laughs> he went to Terranova High School. And when he was at Terranova is actually when his fundraising career started where he was raising money for the prom. And you know, little did he know but that fundraising skill was really, really going to help his community in the future. Mm. He was also, that's when he started his music career as lead singer and cute band boy for his band, Backseat Driver. And that's when I met Robbie. They were playing gigs at the Boys and Girls Club. Oh. And so I was so impressed with Robbie when he was a young man because he, he was a communicator. He would answer emails and not just like one sentence emails, but like full on answers. And he was so young. Um, and that's what I always admired about him was just that he was such a communicator. Uh, into, well, when the recession started, um, Robbie and his father, Steve, they lost their home. And so Robbie and Steve had to work really, really, really hard to bounce back from that. And Robbie has often said that he wished he had known about the Pacifica Resource Center then because they could have helped. However, they did bounce back and they were able to start their own business. So now they have the restaurant Breakers in Rockaway Beach, which everybody knows and loves. And that's just a story of resilience, right? It really is. Um, during that time, Robbie was working for Google and maybe Apple. Sorry, Robbie, I got that a little confused. But anyway, it was not filling his heart. It wasn't making him happy. And so he became a board member at the Pacifica Resource Center. And then eventually they hired him as communication and development coordinator for the Resource Center. And over the next four and a half years, Robbie helped raise thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for the Pacifica Resource Center. And you know, it wasn't just that he was raising the money. It was, he was making the community excited to give money. He was making the community excited to be a part of the Resource Center because he was out there, he was talking at events, he was all over social media, he was making videos, he was making me make videos, <laughs> which we had a lot of fun doing. But that kind of communication really brought a lot of life and love um, to the Pacifica Resource Center. And it also reduced the stigma for people who are accessing services. Because there was a young guy out there like Robbie talking about it's okay to ask for help. And so I think that's brilliant. Robbie, I thank you for all the work you did at the Resource Center. From Yeah, I thank you for that. Uh, he's done so many other things along the way. Uh, so Robbie was responsible for my campaign. He and his his team, Screen Age Media, created such a beautiful campaign for me that I was elected to city council. The videos and the website and the graphic design and all the messaging and pushing me and pushing me to my limit to really get out there. But that's just because he wanted to help, right? He wanted to help me and that's how Robbie is. He's helped Pacifica youth learn how to create videos and tell their stories and start podcasts because that's what Robbie does. He like encourages people and his energy is contagious and, and it just brings life into any situation. And you know, this, this award is about community champions and it's about giving back to your community. And, and Robbie is that because I know at any time I am with Robbie and we are walking down the street, we are gonna find somebody and Robbie's gonna say, hey, how can I help you with this? And so if that's not a community champion, I do not know what is. And so from the bottom of my heart, I love you, Robbie, endlessly. And I'm so proud of you. I give you Robbie Ben.
Hey, Robbie. Yeah. Hello. Hey, buddy. Can you hear me? <laughs> we can hear you. Nice. That uh, surprised me. Thank you, pal. I'm a little uh, choked up. I appreciate the kind words. You you never have a shortage of kind words, but uh, you know I've had a pretty crazy day, week, month, year. I'm sure we all have, and, and Mary's kind of seen it go. But uh, yeah, I didn't expect that. I forgot about half of that stuff in my life. We don't. I don't think we give ourselves enough credit, and I also think we tend not to remember some of the things that brought us to where we are today. So I want to thank her for that, thank myself for that, <laughs> and just thank all of you for the support uh, and for everyone watching. And I'm just so honored to be here with, with this list. I, I, I was joking around that I don't belong on this list, and, and everyone I made that joke with, they're like, no, you, you definitely do. So I, I am definitely starting to believe it, so thank you. Well, thank you, Robbie. We, we, we really love you, brother. And yeah, it is true. You do, you do belong on the list, as does everybody here tonight. And um, I just want to say thank you to you, brother. And I want to say thank you to this entire group. Um, and I mean uh, uh, everyone, all the way from Pescadero to Pacifica, Half Moon Bay, and all points in between, because you guys are really what give us the driving strength and, and, and the strength to continue. And, you know, I would just like to, to, to close tonight um, by remembering one more person who, um, unfortunately, this, like you said, Robbie, this, this year has been a has been a, uh, it's been a mug, okay? And, uh, and and it's mugged a lot of us of a lot of stuff. But um, what I'd like to do right now, if I could, is close this evening um, by remembering Lynn Ruth Miller. Um, Lynn Ruth Miller was a, a long time volunteer at PCT. She had not one, but two shows on PCT. Uh, Paint with Lynn and um, uh, What's Hot Between the Covers, which by the way, <laughs> is a book review show, <laughs> What's Hot Between the Covers. And uh, this lady has an amazing sense of humor. She was an amazing, amazing stalwart in our community, uh, a teacher for, for most of her life. But you know, this is the power, not only of community media, but of community. Because here's a lady that in her 70s decided that she was gonna conquer the media landscape. So not only did she get a couple of shows down here at her local public access TV station, and, and helped me to train scores of, of people. Uh, one of them, Lindsay, who helped her on her show every, every week, who is now the head anchor at NBC Hawaii in Honolulu for the entire state of Hawaii. She's the head anchor, and she was supporting the Lynn Ruth Miller show, okay? And, and so all of these things tie back together. So again, with thanks to all of our interns, with thanks to all of our many, many volunteers, to all the folks who help us raise money, to help Robbie and friends raise money for the Pacifica Resource Center, for senior co-signers, for all the different organizations that, that matter on our coast side. Um, this is how it happens, is that we all get involved. So what I'm going to play to you, uh, play for you, I should say, is a little bit of what happened after Lynn Ruth Miller left Pacifica, mind you, in her late 70s and had a whole other career as a stand-up comedian, believe it or not, as a stand-up comedian in Britain. She got on the show Britain's Got Talent, and then from there, it was a snowball effect. So I'm going to roll that, and then when we're and then afterwards, we're just going to roll the credits, but, but thank you so very much, everyone. Uh, we, we love you. And, uh, and we need all of you, as I know that we all need each other. So thank you for being there for us, and we'll always be there for you. And with that, our last honoree, via video, as she was seen on Britain's Got Talent, Lynn Ruth Miller. Pacific Coast Television provides a platform for community members to put their shows on TV. Let's take a look at some of the shows produced and aired on PCT throughout the years. Welcome to the only live primetime musical variety show on the west coast of the United States. But she's talking, Lord of fun, with someone that she really loves. It takes rocks and gravel, make a solid room. I got some real good TV tonight. <laughs> Ready? This is Soundwaves TV.
Let's welcome Kathy Holly and Spotlight. Welcome to Street Talk for Entrepreneurs, where we reveal what it really takes to build a successful business. Hi, I'm Brandon C. White, and this is Build a Business Success Secrets. I had to do a special, I think I'm going to call this a season finale with my pal of pals, Mary and Beer is in the house. How are you, Mary? Hi, if you have an idea for a show and want to get your message out to the world, PCT can make it happen. For more information, please visit PacificCoast.tv and sign up to become a member. Let's make your show a reality. I tell jokes. Oh, okay. And I also strip. But I, I can't strip here because they only give you two minutes, and I can't take my clothes off in two minutes. <laughs> the first time I was on stage was when I was 71, and as soon as I got on stage, I was hooked. I'm 78. I'm going to be 79 pretty soon. Oh, wow. You, you would never know that. Yes, you would. If I took off my clothes, you'd be convinced. And I do. <laughs> What's your name, please? Lynn Ruth Miller. And from your accent, I guess you're from America? So I'm from San Francisco. San Francisco. So how long have you been doing what you're about to do? I first went on stage when I was 71. So what did you do before you went on stage? I had two failed marriages. Both husbands are still alive. Really? I know, it's a shame. Are they here with you? <laughs> So go ahead. You've given me two minutes up here because you think that's all the time I've got left. <laughs> well, I can hardly blame you. I've had so many body replacements that when I go through airport security, it sounds like I just hit the jackpot in Vegas. <laughs> but I love going through airport security now because they explore your sensitive areas. And my two husbands couldn't find them. 